So I was thinking about how to explain how to read critically and how to read intensively or how to read actively. Um, and this is probably the, the most common question I get. The reason why um, those critical discussion marks are the top end of the dissertation is because it really requires a certain type of reading style. The problem of writing critically comes from the lack of reading in a specific type of way. And I came across this um, sort of list and guide of ways to read critically, um, written by a librarian from Harvard Library. And I found it, I think, probably the best description that I've found. And so I've sourced it here. Feel free to go and check it out. It's a lot more detail. There's a lot more detail there. I'll leave a link for it in the show notes, the, the lesson notes down below. But essentially, it's composed of six main things that you do as you read. The first is previewing the text. Second is annotating. The third, outline, summarize, and analyze. The fourth, look patterns and repetitions, contextualize, compare, and contrast. Those are th six things that you should be doing when you read any text, whether it's a book, whether it's a journal, whether it's an article. So the first one is to preview the text. Now, previewing the text means to look at the text and to gain some assumptions before you even read it. So you might want to look at the prefatory materials. This can include the abstract. This can include the title. This could also include the authors. What do you know about them? What do you know about the title? What does the abstract say? So prefatory just means sort of what is the material that comes before the actual paper. So you're looking around, you're kind of trying to feel around and get, get, you know, get an idea for what's to come. Look at the layout. Is it an article that has lots of diagrams? What do the diagrams look like? Um, don't read anything yet. Just kind of look and kind of engage with the text before you actually start to read it. Then the authors as well. So who are the authors, as I mentioned here? Who are they? Do you know who they are? Have you read anything from them before? Um, do you have any expectations as to what may come in this paper? So we haven't read anything yet, but just previewing the text. It's a bit like when you get lecture notes um, before a lecture, and you flick through and you try to figure out how long it is, um, how much work you're going to have to do, how much writing you're going to have to do. You're just kind of sussing it out. And that's the first thing that you want to do. The second thing you want to do is to annotate. Now, she says, First and foremost, get rid of your highlighter. Highlighting text, just kind of making yellow marks everywhere, doesn't mean anything when you come back to look at it in a month's time or a year's time. It doesn't mean anything. So get rid of it. And instead, use these three techniques. The first is to use your margins as memory triggers. Imagine you have your page, you've got your margin. What are you writing here on the side that is going to help you in the future when you come back to read that text. So imagine you come back in six months' time. What is written here that can trigger your memory um, from what you read? Because you will remember it somehow. Um, but what can you write here to help you? So kind of a few notes maybe, a few thoughts. Um, that can really help. So use your margin. If you're not printing it out, so I think lots, now lots of us are just writing on our iPads or on our phones or just on our laptops, you can still kind of add notes on PDFs. So one. The second is a symbol system. So you can use symbols like um, asterisks or even like exclamation marks or question marks. I tend to use those three the most. Um, so for example, if I want to remember something, uh, I put an asterisk there. If something's shocking to me or surprising, I put an exclamation mark. If I need to know a bit more, I'll put a question mark. So those three um, symbols, and you can use any symbol you want, triangle or circle, as long as you define them and you're consistent with them, that's the most important thing. So if you flick back at any of your notes, you'll see exclamation mark and you'll say, I know that shocked me. So let me take a look at that again. Or a question mark. So later on when you approach your supervisor, you can ask a question based on where your question marks are. Ask yourself questions. What this does it is it actually helps you later on when you go to your supervisions or you go to your meeting with your supervisor and he says or she says, what do you, any questions about this text? Uh, is there anything you want to know? You have a bank of questions there already. And that really helps because it means that you're engaging with the text in a way that means you're thinking critically. You're asking yourself, why did they do this? What's the evidence for this? What's, could they not have done it in this way? What's the reason for, for this result? Um, what does this result actually show? Because sometimes you just don't understand what you've read and that's completely okay. But ask yourself the questions. Write the questions down somewhere maybe at the end of the paper or in a book somewhere. So you've got those questions there you can refer back to in the future. 
So moving on to the next is outline, summarize, and analyze. So these are three methods, again, that are part of um, reading and intensively. So firstly is being able to outline. So once you've read the paper, think of if you can write the outline, the skeleton, in sort of one sentence. So what is the outline of your particular paper that you've just read? In the second one, summarize it. So can you summarize it maybe in a few sentences or in a paragraph? Then analyze. So now that you've kind of thought about the summary and the outline, can you analyze it? Can you think of um, why things have, done, have been done in the way that it was? Can you think of how strong or how weak the evidence was? Can you think of um, if there were alternative methods that could have been used or alternative arguments or explanations? Um, can you reflect on the arguments being made and try to make connections with other texts that you've read? Um, this is where the analysis part of it really comes from. And this is sort of something that you're doing as you're going along. And, and this could actually be part of your Excel spreadsheet. So maybe you can have a tab for outline line and summarize um, and as you're reading you can try to fill those fill those gaps in and then maybe even add a bit of analysis notes so when you come back to it you're able to just quickly um, figure out what it was about that paper that you um, really loved and that that kind of led you to thinking a bit deeper so the fourth technique is to look at repetitions and patterns. So this can include the choice of words. It can include repeated phrases, illustrations, or examples given. And this is supposed to give you an idea of the tone. So what is the tone of the text? What is it that the author is trying to relay to the readers? Um, what's the author trying to say? What does the author find important? The fifth technique is to contextualize. So now that you've done the reading, you want to think about the same situation in different perspectives. And lastly, being able to compare and contrast. So now you've done the reading, you've got your bank of information, you've analyzed it, you've given a summary. You can think about the themes of the text. So this again, actually themes, this themes, could be part of the Excel spreadsheet as well. I think that's a pretty good, a pretty good one to add into it. So themes, what are the themes in this paper? Um, and, and then maybe what you could do is sort of try to compare different papers with similar themes. That would be a good way to, to critically discuss. What are the connections? Again, you can connect through the themes, through the ideas, um, through the limitations maybe, through the methods and then consider gaps in the research. So this is where you're really leading towards. You're leading towards trying to read as much as you can to find that gap that you are aiming to fill through your research.